Hello, my name is Andy, and I'm one of the three hosts of the Tuning Japanese podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to click on this video, whether you are one of our patrons or you just stumbled upon it on our Patreon feed at patreon.com slash tuningjapanese or some other place. I don't know if this is going to end up on YouTube at some point uh, or wherever it will be, but thank you so much for checking this video out. Really, really appreciate it. Um, today, what I wanted to do is introduce you to the basics of the tabletop role-playing game Big Eye Small Mouth, also known as Bessem. And this is a video where we're going to preview essentially not just what this game is, that's what this first video is going to be, but also what we're going to do with the Big Eye Small Mouth system uh, in future videos. So if you, again, don't know about the Tuning Japanese podcast, we are a weekly podcast where we review a new episode of an anime series and we talk about and break down what happens and give our own sort of take on it. Uh, it's myself, my friend Bill, my friend Josh, and we have reviewed in entirety all of Excel Saga, Trigon, Grunlagon, and we're actually currently wrapping up two different anime right now, Record of Lotus War, the OVA, as well as Wolf's Reign. If that sounds interesting to you, go check out our episodes at tuningjapanese.com or wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. So what is Big Eye Small Mouth? Well, Bessem is a role-playing game, a tabletop role-playing game, developed by David Pulver and Mark McKinnon, and it was published by Guardians of Order, which is now a defunct RPG company. It was nominated in the year 2000 for two different Origins awards, including Best Role-Playing Game and Best RPG Graphic Design. This relatively small gaming book of around only 200 pages has brought both myself and my gaming friends like Bill and Josh countless numbers of hours of entertainment and fun memories gathered around the gaming table. The premise behind Bessem is to create your own anime characters and worlds. It's what's known as a generic system, uh, something that you can essentially do anything with. Uh, you can run literally any type of setting, but obviously the overall flavor of Big Eyes Small Mouth is that of anime, uh, some of your favorite Japanese stories, uh, manga, animes, etc. So you could totally run a tabletop RPG game around your favorite anime or characters, or you can come up with your own ideas and let your own creative energies flow free and create your own version of your dream anime. So first off, just in case you're curious what a tabletop RPG actually is, think of something like Dungeons & Dragons. Dungeons & Dragons is kind of like the quintessential tabletop RPG. It's a game where you get together with your friends and work together and collaborate to tell a story using your imaginations, using a gaming system like the Dungeons and Dragons setting, or in this case, the Big Eye Small Mouse setting, and using oftentimes even physical objects like dice or miniatures to be able to represent and to affect how the game is played. Um, think of those games of make-believe, right, when you were young and growing up and how you would essentially go out and pretend, uh, except this has more guidelines, this has more structure to it. If you've never played a tabletop game before and you want to see what they're like, I would suggest going out and searching for what are called actual play podcasts. Essentially they're videos on YouTube or on podcasts where you can listen to or watch people play Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop role-playing games. Uh, a couple of my favorites are Drunks and Dragons, which is an actual play of the 5th edition D&D. And then there's also the Happy Jacks uh, RPG podcast does a separate feed for actual plays, and they're very good. I'm actually featured on one of the earliest of their episodes way, way back. We were playing uh, a game, and it, it was a ton of fun. So uh, definitely check those out. Trust me, you will have no problem finding an actual play and finding guidelines and help for how to actually run one of these tabletop games. So in order to play Big Eye Small Mouth, you need a group of people, minimum of two. One person runs the game. They're called the storyteller or game master, GM, and they come up with the plot. They come up with the characters. They come up with the setting, all of those kind of things. And then everyone else plays the actual game. They're the players or the PCs. They come up with their specific character that they create themselves and run and pretend to be throughout the entirety of the game. They navigate the storyteller's world. Working together, everyone involved, whether it's the storyteller, whether it's the players, work as a unit to try to tell an interesting narrative. And that's really the crux of uh, most RPGs. 
The only other thing that's absolutely necessary to play Big Eye Small Mouth are dice. And you don't even need for this game anything really special. You just need two regular dice. They're called D6s. They're the ones that come with Monopoly or Yahtzee or whatever board game you may have lying around the house. So you need those as well as a character sheet. And character sheets are essentially a template where you fill out all the information about your character. There are specific character sheets made for most RPGs, including Big Eye Small Mouth. I will include a link in the comments of this video so that way you can find a couple of places where you can download ones to print off or even an editable version that you can then save on your computer and print off and change throughout an entire game. So today I want to go over some of the basic mechanics of the game and more specifically how to create a character if you are a player in this game. Once I go through all of this we're going to release a number of other videos where we don't really go over the rules necessarily but instead we walk you through the creation of a character. And the characters we're going to create are going to be characters from your favorite anime. Um, characters probably starting with ones that we reviewed, so characters from Excel Saga and Trigon and Gurren Lagann, but then also other ones, including ones that patrons get to decide. There will be more information near the end of the video with regards to that, but that's kind of what you can expect going forward. Again, if you want to get that content and you want to give your own voice of what you want to see us create, you can head to patreon.com slash tuning Japanese. So let's get started with some of the basics. Before you create your character, it's up to your storyteller, as well as the players, to decide how powerful the characters of your campaign are going to be. For example, if I were going to run a slice of life, down-to-earth sort of anime, uh, something like Toradora or Usagi Drop, uh, probably going to create characters with Besom that are lower powered. Uh, if you wanted to create something inspired or even set in the Dragon Ball Z universe, maybe One Punch Man, uh, for example, your characters are going to be a lot more powerful and use the extremely high-powered rules. Essentially, the only difference between one rule set and another rule set are the number of character points that you start with. And character points are the number of numerical points that you get to build your actual character, every single aspect pretty much of that character. A low powered game might give you as few as 15 or 20 character points. A higher powered game might give you 50 or more power points. So the very first thing that you spend your character points on are the game's three stats. Those would be body, mind, and soul which encompass everything your character can basically do. Uh, your stats range from a scale of 0 to 12, and the higher your stat is, the better you are at that particular ability. For example, a high body stat might be someone who is stronger or more agile or more durable. Um, think characters like Goku from Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Jupiter from Sailor Moon. Uh, a high mind stat would be someone who is more intelligent, quick-witted, um, people like Levi Ackerman from Attack on Titan or uh, Conan Etagawa from Case Closed. And a high soul stat might be equivalent uh, to describing someone's willpower or their spiritual connection or their empathy or their psychic ability. Characters like Moroku from Inuyasha or Sailor Mars from Sailor Moon. So an average stat is four. Four is considered human average, whereas anything below is below average, anything above is above average. And since the game goes all the way to 12, you can tell that obviously you can vary up the levels quite a bit to kind of get into as far as like superhuman territory. The first thing you need to consider is how many points you are willing to spend from your starting character point pool. You want to make sure that you don't spend all of your points just on stats alone, and you want to make sure you leave room for character uh, attributes and skills. And we'll talk more about that in a bit. So how exactly do these numbers come into play throughout the game? Uh, in most tabletop RPGs, players that want to do something challenging often have to roll dice to determine if their character succeeds or their character fails. In this game, you always roll 2d6, and you want the roll to either equal the number that your stat is or be lower in order to succeed. So, for example, if you want to knock a door open, you're going to roll your body stat. If your body stat is 6, you need a 6 or lower on the dice to succeed. The other major aspect of character creation is your character attributes. Attributes are what your character's special abilities are. They're what really define them outside of just their strength and their smarts and their soul. 
This might be things like fighting ability, uh, could be innate aspects like a character's charisma or their stamina, could be magical powers, could be specific physical features, and many, many other things. Uh, attributes fall into six categories, and we're going to talk about those. And the six are mecha, normal, paranormal, racial, technological, and universal. Normal attributes are anything a normal human being might possess. Things like appearance, which is an attribute that determines the attractiveness of your character, or heightened awareness, which provides a bonus to roles involving noticing something. Mecha attributes are used to build actual mechs. This is anime, so they offer you a way to build mechs that you can play and control. All you really need to do is to take the attribute own a big mecha, and you can use the mecha attributes to create your machine. Technological attributes are similar to mecha ones in that they can be applied to a mech, but they also can be applied to a player character if they themselves are robots like an android or a cyborg. Paranormal attributes encompass anything supernatural or magical in nature. These uh, attributes include anything from providing your character with spells or psychic abilities to having regenerative powers or telepathy. Always make sure that paranormal abilities, of course, are allowed in the game before taking them, because that could totally wreck a low-powered game. Racial attributes are those that a non-human character probably has. This could be useful for fantasy-based games or playing animals. Like if I were playing Wolf's Reign as an RPG, I might use some of these racial attributes. And then finally, there's universal attributes, which are kind of a catch-all category for anything else that doesn't fit into the other five. Each attribute in the game has a different cost and most are connected with one or more of those base three stats. You can purchase multiple levels of a single attribute, and the max number of levels for an attribute depend upon the attribute. Some max out at six. For example, the attribute, damn healthy, one of my favorite ones. Uh, it's specifically every single level that you take, you get more health points, hit points or health points, and you can go all the way up to six levels. On the other hand, something more elaborate like the ability Elasticity only has two levels. And each level, as you can see in this visual, provides different bonuses and extra abilities one level to the next. Once you pick all of your abilities, you can actually boost that number beyond what you were originally given by taking what are called character defect points. Character defects, like the name suggests, are drawbacks for your character things that will grant you free bonus points in exchange for negatives that affect your character either mechanically or in a more role-playing sense. For example, there's the awkward defect, which can lower your combat value, making you a less capable fighter. While it does this, it can also open up more interesting role-playing opportunities for the player and for the storyteller to infuse that awkwardness into the story. The party could be trying to sneak past some guards, and one of them has the awkward defect. Maybe they accidentally slip and fall, alerting the adversaries to the player's position. That's the risk you take. You get the bonus points, but at the same time you get that negative downfall of having that character defect. So the last thing that's worth mentioning about character creation are skill points. Skill points are a pool that's completely separate from everything else. They're not character points, they're their own thing and you can spend those on specific abilities. They're kind of like attributes, except attributes give you special powers. Think of it as more like what the name in kind of says, skills, things that you're good at. Um, these are maybe mental strengths and knowledges, things like medical training, uh, maybe some sort of knowledge of the sciences, schooling, academics. It could be something more physical, like being acrobatic or surviving in the wild. It could be something more specific, like your ability as a writer, or in forgery, or in any number of other abilities. And mechanically, you would get to add this to your roles. So if I have a doing a strength sort of situation, um, I can add a strength skill onto my stat to make it easier. As another more specific example, if I'm making a mind roll to hack into a mainframe, I might have skill points in computers. I can add that, that level of computers, so if I have two levels, add it to my mind score, which might be a five, make that effectively a seven, meaning I need to now roll a seven or lower rather than a five or lower, making the roll that much easier.
it's ultimately up to your storyteller to determine how many skill points you get. And they usually range somewhere between 10 and 60. You can increase that number on your own by taking the highly skilled attribute, however, which is really useful if you want to be really good at a lot of things. There's a handy chart in a book, which you are looking at now, uh, but you can also work together to come up with your own skills that might not be listed. Also note that you can adjust the cost of the skills based on the type of setting and the game being run. It should really cost less per point of a skill for shooting, for example, if it's a combat heavy setting compared to a slice of life game. The very last thing you're going to have to do is calculate some additional stats that are used throughout the game. Uh, these include the combat value, which to put simply explains kind of how effective you are in a fight. This is split between attack and defense value and is calculated by adding your body, mind, and soul stats together, the numbers, and dividing it by three. That number will give you your attack combat value and then you just subtract two from that and that gives you your defense combat value. Uh, these stats are used with combat rolls, something I won't really be covering in this video, but just know that the higher those stats are, the more badass that you are. So the last two stats that are really important are your health points and your energy points. Health points are what they sound like. They are a pool of points that are taken away or regained over the course of uh, a session. And it's how much damage that you can take, essentially. Think of them like hit points in video games. To calculate it, you would put, take your body stat and your soul stat, add them together, and multiply that by five. Energy points are similar. They are your mind and your soul stat added together, multiplied by five, and they are used to power your abilities. And all of the abilities that need energy points are laid out in the rules of the book. And again, any of this information, I really stress getting into the book itself. You're not going to be able to run or even create a character just from this video. Um, dig into the book. This is just the basics. But that's the, really the last two major stats you have to worry about. And that's it. That's the bare bones of how to create a character in big eyes, small mouth. It's, I hope, a general overview of how to go about it and a little bit about what this game is kind of like. I tried to infuse little bits of images from the book here and there. Uh, but again, if you want to find out the entirety of what this game is about, I encourage you to go seek out the game. Uh, you can pick up a PDF copy on drivethroughrpg.com, which is where I usually get all of my role-playing guides, supplements, and texts. Uh, it is on sale for $24.99, but as of the moment of this recording, it's on sale for $14.99. So definitely go check that out. I'll put a link in the notes as well. Um, you can look other places, go to your local hobby shop and ask and see if they can get a copy of that game or they may even have a copy of that game potentially on their shelf. And of course you can go to places like Amazon or eBay. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am very new to this idea of video editing. I have spent the last three plus years doing work with podcasts. God, it's been more than three years at this point, I'd imagine. But uh, I, I'm very familiar with an audio medium. I'm not as familiar with doing these videos. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, you can find more of these videos on our Patreon feed, patreon.com slash tuning Japanese once again and we'll be trying to release a new one at least once a month. And the first several videos will be free to watch. You don't have to be a patron, you don't have to subscribe. Um, we appreciate if you can. It would help us and does help us run our show, the podcast that we do once a week, and do other things like this, take our time to create videos and do some fun side project kind of stuff. After the first several months, we will start putting the videos behind the paywall on our Patreon um, for only $2 a month. Uh, you can get not only all of our back catalog of bonus episodes, which we're up to like 28 bonus episodes right now, um, but you can get access to the videos and then always get access to the PDFs that we're gonna post. So we're gonna create over the next several months into the future anime characters and we're gonna save those character sheets that you can download and use. So if you wanna run a game of Big Eye Small Mouth you can pull the characters off of there. You don't even have to create your own. You can play as Vash the Stampede or whoever it is that you uh, also help us decide. Not only that, but if you pledge for $3 a month, which already gets you all the things I just mentioned and some stickers, if you bump it up one more dollar, you'll be able to choose one anime character for us to create 
and run a video and post that PDF. So for $2 or $3 a month, you can get all kinds of great, cool bonus stuff. And we'd really appreciate your support. That's it. That's all I got. Thank you so much. And if you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments, share it with your friends, share the Patreon, share our podcast. We put a lot of work into the show and we just want to continue to grow and give back as much as possible. So thank you once again. And as we say on the show, we'll see you next time. Thank you.